Rebecca Lawrence. She will be arriving shortly. John Sarantopoulos. Yes. Matthew Wendorf. Here. Michael Huco. Yeah. And Keith Thurlow. Keith Thurlow. Oh, here. I'm He's sorry. here. Uh, I can see him. An alternate new member just kind of threw me totally off guard here. I was not expecting it, and we haven't had him in so long. It's like, nice. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Hope you have as much fun as I do. Uh, not. Anyway. Um, Where are we? Roll call. Gee. So we can see Mr. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Mike. Mike. How much you at him again? You Just one quick question. Um, I know we concede him, but can he actually vote? He has not been here for the last. Ken Slater, uh, he wouldn't be able to unless he's had an opportunity to uh, review. to review all the materials to to, to be ready. So I don't know if you understand what the question was. Yes. He's okay. He can still participate, though. Right. Until once a motion is made, if it was a matter that he couldn't participate in all on because he wasn't in the hearing, then you wouldn't be seated. But uh, if the hearing, when a hearing is open, because uh, you don't know if you're going to vote tonight, uh, you can participate fully in the co any questions during the course of the public hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, if the alternate's not seated or if a person's not qualified to vote because they have a conflict or they're n they haven't, uh, you know, not familiar with the material, they shouldn't participate in, in, in that discussion. Okay, um, so then we, you're seated for tonight. Obviously, you know the instructions. Any addendums, Emily? Any addendums? No. No addendum. No. Um, citizens' comments on items not subject to the public hearing. Uh, public comments can be emailed to public comment at killinglyct.gov or mailed to the town of Killingly, 172 Main Street, Killingly, Connecticut, 06239, on or before the meeting. All public comment must be received prior to 2 p.m. the day of the meeting. Public comment received will be posted on the town's website, www.killinglyct.gov. Note to participants in the citizens' comments, the public may join the meeting via telephone while viewing the the meeting on Facebook Live. To join the phone by phone, please dial 1415-655-0001 and use the access code 2630-230-8265. Um, so is there anybody here want to speak for citizens' comments on anything but what's on the public hearings tonight? If that you understood that. Okay, I guess nobody. And we didn't receive any new public comments through the email. Okay. All right, special permit continued. 21 1273, David Cody, Frito Lay, landowner, 1886 Upper Maple, GIS map 62, lot 53, 94 acres, industrial zone for a portion of proposed building addition that will exceed the maximum height of 50 feet for said zone with a proposed height of 86 feet. Eight and a half inches. Um, that also would includes the uh, site plan review, right? Yes, site plan it's review is also. Well, the site plan, plan isn't really part of the public hearing, although they've been reading it together. Okay. So it's just under unfinished I just business. Thought we should, I should mention it. All right. Um, so. Mr. Slater, I need you to explain to us, please, because I've never experienced this type of situation before. So if you give us a brief sundown, I'm sure everybody else would appreciate it as well as myself. In, in what respect? The um, we've got written uh, motions yep. from the three different parties, right? Um, and we, as far as I can tell, we, the only thing we can really discuss as if the public hearing was open, is the, uh, uh, help me out here. The, the, the way, cut and fill. The cut and fill. Right. So the way we left it off at the last session was to advise the public that everyone has had an opportunity to be heard. Uh, the one item that was, one, I'll call it one and a half items that, that were open, uh, one was 
the, that the applicant was going to submit some additional information that the commission wanted to hear regarding the cut and fill and the intervener and the applicant both agreed that they were going to a work together to see if they could come up with conditions that that, that were you know that they were completely aligned on and in the alternative that they were going to exchange them in advance so that staff would have an opportunity to review them and to prepare draft motions for the Commission so my suggestion is is that you allow the applicant to present uh, any information that it wishes to present on the the cut and fill question and uh, and then when we proceed with closing the public hearing I'm prepared to help advise the Commission I don't think you've had a lot of environmental intervention petitions and, and how you would approach that um, and I think we can can uh, advise you uh, once the public hearing is closed if that works mr. mr. chairman members of the Commission I'm attorney Joseph hammer for the applicant Frito-Lay and I'm gonna turn it over to Brian DeTolo from Haskell who will walk you through the information on the cut and fill that we provided thank you Joe um, thank you commissioning agencies here and uh, my name is Brian Dotolo with Haskell and uh, before we talk about the cut fill analysis and how we propose to uh, transfer this fill not only on site but also off-site I'd like to introduce Stephen Cole who's a civil engineer for Haskell where he can go ahead and review the actual cut fill analysis and the, and the associated plan Yeah, thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to begin with, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Perfect. So you should be seeing my screen here in a second. Can everybody see uh, the exhibit here? Yes. Yes. Awesome. So this analysis, uh, cut fill analysis for all areas of work um, regarding the phase two project. Um, the analysis was performed um, using Civil 3D, and it actually compares uh, proposed surfaces to existing surface that was uh, surveyed. Um, so to begin with, just so everybody has clear understanding of what we're looking at, um, the elevations table, you're going to see a, a varying range of colors. Um, the darkest of red um, begins at a, a cut of around minus 13 feet. And then it works slowly upwards in increments of two feet in elevation range um, up to the darkest green, which is uh, data range 12 at 10 or 12 feet of fill. So if you look at these elevation tables, um, there's not a, a lot of cut that's going down to that minus 13 range. The majority of the cut remains within that uh, uh, interval five to seven, which would be minus four feet of cut up to two feet of fill or even up to four feet of fill. So that's um, even though we broke it out systematically and incrementally up to 12 data points, um, majority of that earthwork is going to happen within that four uh, minus four to plus four range. So before I get into presenting some numbers and walking around the site, um, some basis of design elements. Um, looking back at some boring logs that were taken from 2009 uh, and then 2020, um, we determined that a swell factor of 1.20 or 20% um, would, would be appropriate and applied to all these uh, cut volumes. Uh, from a shrinkage standpoint, we applied 1.05 or 5% to account for compaction of that uh, on-site transferred fill material. So just so everybody's aware that that was taken into account when we were determining these volumes. So it's not just a proposed service to existing service comparison. So what I really wanted to um, kind of break it down and in, was into five distinct areas um, around the site. Um, area one being the auto parking lot. And you'll see majority of our cut is uh, happening along this ridge right here. Um, and this is where you're getting that 13, roughly um, 13 feet of cut. And then varying to uh, a fill condition on the far west side. So if we look at area one, I actually broke it out as a separate cut fill uh, analysis and individual surface. So the auto parking alone, uh, we're looking at around 19,300 cubic yards of cut. 
Uh, moving on, we also modeled the finished floor of all the proposed buildings um, and pavement improvements. This is area two, which is also on the cut side of the site, looking at around 13,300 cubic yards of cut. Transitioning, the south side is uh, generally a, a fill condition. Area three would be in the uh, location of the new manufacturing building. This is roughly 10,500 cubic yards of fill for the manufacturing building. And then area four would be the uh, lot 900 trailer spaces, also primarily a fill condition at uh, 23 or 2,400 cubic yards of fill. We also wanted to model the underground detention system um, within the existing parking lot that goes down to approximately a depth of eight feet uh, for those storm chambers. And area five, is approximately uh, 4,300 cubic yards of cut. So all that said, uh, looking at the site as a whole, taking into account uh, shrink and swell of on-site transfer, this uh, overall cut fill analysis, we're around 31,780 cubic yards of cut on-site. Are there any questions, uh, any point along this exhibit? Now I'll hand back over to Brian. So of the 31,000 yards, how much of it is going to stay on site? So th that's, that's taking into account potential fill. So that would um, ultimately be export material. So 31,000 yards has to leave the site. Is that right? Correct. Yep. That's what we're taking into account, right? And I saw it in here. You had maps showing. That's correct. You had maps showing the, the potential destinations of that fill. Um, on one of these maps. Out of the yeah, third, sheet. third yeah. one down. <coughs> you have uh, four sites, correct? Mr. Commissioner, this yes. is Brian Dutolo. Um, I was going to go ahead and present uh, those slides that you're referring to. If I can take some okay, time to run through that. On. Okay. That is correct. Uh, Jonathan, can you back up uh, one, one slide, please? Go to the beginning. There, there we go. Okay, that's a little bit. Well, that first slide that you see, that's exactly the, the slide in the drawing that uh, Stephen went through that equates to a total of uh, 31,779 to be exact cubic yards to be transferred off site. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please. I uh, wanted to uh, boil that down a little bit. Um, the items or the locations in red that you see on this slide, uh, those are areas of cut. Um, there's areas one, uh, five, and three that correspond to uh, Stephen's locations. And the areas of green is the location of fill. And we have uh, on this drawing red arrows that show the direction that we're going to take for our dump trucks to go ahead and transfer the, uh, the fill or the cut from the, uh, the red locations to the green locations. So we would be uh, passing through the western edge of the employee parking lot, transitioning to the west gravel road. Uh, to the uh, locations in green. So we would not be going out on the public street on Upper Maple Street or Attawagan to get to those locations. So now that takes us to the excess fill, the 31,000 plus. Uh, we would take that through either the employee parking lot or the employee entrance or the truck entrance out to Attawagan. Once again, we would avoid using Upper, upper Maple uh, there is a temporary road that connects the employee entrance to Frito Lake and the truck entrance. So we would utilize that temporary access road to Attawagan. So on this slide, we do have some stati statistics where we are talking about the, uh, the number of trucks that would be um, making their way to Ottawa Attawagan. Um, each dump truck would hold an average of 13 cubic yards of fill. And we're estimating that the average trips off-site would be 75 trips per day, so 75 uh, truckloads per day exiting the site onto Attawagan. And uh, the maximum amount would be 115. 
and um, that's the anticipating is that there is no issues on site there's no uh, uh, processing processing of gravel on site that it is a an even process even flow process so the maximum would be 115 trips off-site per day and um, so when we talk about the two locations we're estimating that the amount of time that would take to cut number one which is the employee parking lot by transferring the excess fill off that location is about 15,000 cubic yards and that would be a four-week process to go ahead and take that off site once again exiting off on Attawagan and cut area two which is the future ASRS parking excuse me ASRS building location that has approximately 16,000 cubic yards of fill from that location and that would take around the same duration four weeks time to go ahead and move that fill off site through Attawagan Drive so all in all told it'd be about an eight week process to remove fill off the property Jonathan if you can go to the next slide and uh, mr. commissioner this is the drawing that uh, you were referring to uh, we just want to give an idea of some of the companies that we were in contact with that would accept the fill that would be coming from the site fill that would be either be structural fill it could be uh, topsoil or it could be ledge which would be processed into gravel so we've contacted these uh, four companies you can see their locations relative to uh, Frito-Lay um, Barnes Concrete is in Putnam um, they would be willing to accept uh, the material that would be coming off of Frito-Lay uh, Damaris and Sons they would accept the structural fill only that would be coming off um, the Frito-Lay property and they're just right around the corner from the job site location ECR premium mulch they're here in Danielson uh, they would accept all types of fill uh, that are in excess and uh, Ramco construction they're out of Dudley Massachusetts um, they would also accept uh, fill as well so when we get to the point of uh, buying out the project and selecting our earthwork contractor uh, we would in turn select the uh, the location where this fill material would go to um, next slide please and uh, this slide just uh, wanted to reinforce the routing that we would take to uh, go to uh, the individual sites um, uh, stressing the fact that we would not be utilizing uh, Upper Maple Street to go ahead and haul this material off um, the, the arrow in blue uh, that's taking the uh, going to the location of Damaris and Sons uh, we understand we can't make a left onto Attawagan so we would go ahead and cut through the um, uh, the Plitniak property and make the left there to go to uh, uh, Daniel's uh, Damaris and Sons location um, the arrows in red that would take us to uh, Barnes and to Ramco utilizing the highway there um, heading north and then uh, the green arrow is going down to Ramco excuse me uh, ECR premium mulch uh, once again utilizing the highway system to get down to their location and bring the fill Um, is there any other questions re regarding the cut fill analysis or the means and methods on where the material is going? Well, it's, uh, I got a question that you answered most of it. Um, my question would be about we're talking about ledge. So, uh, how are you planning on removing ledge, and how much ledge do you expect to be removing? Uh, actually, uh, it's uh, perfect timing uh, we were talking about that this afternoon uh, Stephen and I in terms of some of the borings that we've uh, uh, performed over at the auto parking lot and Stephen if you can provide an update on the borings that we've uh, encountered so far yeah of course so just to begin with it's single borings right four inch or uh, six inch in uh, diameter so there is still potential for some ledge to be present but um, Looking back at some record borings that were done, um, we were actually able to get down to, I believe, elevation 284 at the location of the largest cut um, within the auto parking lot. If you remember, that was the dark red uh, within the auto parking lot. There's a boring performed there, um, and it actually came back with um, uh, silty sand and gravelly material. Um, so the auger was actually able to penetrate through that um, rather easily. And we actually had some SPT tests that were done on that material. 
um, which didn't signify ledge at that location of the greatest cut. Um, so, which is good news. Um, but all that said, obviously there's still potential for ledge within that area. And if we do encounter ledge, uh, and if it's large mass of ledge, we would go ahead and blast and go through the proper permitting procedures to go ahead and, and uh, get the approval to go ahead and do the blasting. And um, then it's a question of whether or not we process that on site uh, into gravel or have the larger boulders, if you will, hauled off site and have it processed somewhere else um, if we don't need it on site. I think this is what Brian Card was referring to is if it's processing on site then you have to go through section 560 even though you're for processing it on site so um, I think that's just something to be kept in mind down the road I don't know if we need to address that now I, I think Brian would want to but <coughs> it's still speculation it sounds like it's still that that is correct it's still speculation borings don't get the full breadth of what's underneath the ground so there is a good chance we may hit ledge so uh, the, i think the point is uh, as part of the approvals we could put that in there that if you do hit ledge and it heats a break a point i think if it's a i don't know if there's a number on that i know there's a thousand yards is for general fill but i don't know if if that particular section refers to a particular volume of material before you have to permit it but whatever 560 says you know we could have you um, be part of the approval process I, that's what I'm saying it would be Suggestion. section 560.4 permitted activities require zoning permit only um, if the event of the volume of fill exceeds 1,000 cubic mm -hmm. yards zoning permit special permit subdivision plan or site plan shall include a plan for filling as detailed in subsections 590 soil erosion sediment control 560.6 application process, 560.7 performance standards, and 560.8 performance bonds, and right. subsection 560.9 approval criteria. And I think we're just referring to the ledge part of it. The, right. You know, if you're processing, if you're going to start processing on site, it requires uh, conditions, timing, you know, not trying to upset the neighborhood and that kind of stuff. Understand. Okay. Anything else at this point? Any other commission questions on the, on the uh, cut and layout? I got, I got one on the second page, the fill area one. It says on this, the cut and analyze says 15 trailers, but one of the other drawings says 20 trailers. So I'm confused which, how many trailers are going in that area. Which one says 15? real small print but that's 15 mm -hmm. trailers but if you look on 2c 120 it says 20 trailers and you're referring to what area of the map uh file uh, fill area one which is the that's supposed to be the uh, area four, area four on that yeah, yeah. oh that area okay. area four on this correct that's the reason. I used talking to where it says 15 trailer spaces. Yep. Yes. Well, that's 15 trailer spaces. That's parking spaces. Right. 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 But there's another drawing here. 2C-120 says 20 trailers. It says new trailer parking expansion. 20 trailers. That's what we're the, the cut yeah, fill analysis was done on a on an older drawing. Okay. The um, the 15 trailers is the correct count. So the other ones were wrong. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? This is all just regarding the, the cut fill that we said we were going to put off there coming back to the thirty-eight thousand yards of they're on strike. It should have been there Friday. <laughs> John, anything? I'm good. Okay. Anybody <laughs> from the public can they can the public speak on just that or not? 
That's it. That was what was okay. answered. In Anybody from the public want to speak to comments. just that portion of it? Okay. Okay. Then. So now, walk me through this again. We're going to continue on with, we're well, going to close this entirely. Do we want to vote to have a close? You, that, that's what the commission should consider now. Whether okay. Or not, if they're ready to if you had all your answers for the cut fill, then somebody make a motion to uh, close that portion of the public hearing. And that will close the entire public hearing. That, that would be my question. Yeah. You're yeah, looking for a motion to close the just uh, that just yeah. that was continued. Yeah. Yep. I'll make the motion to close the uh, public hearing. Uh, yeah, you want me to read the? Uh, no. No. That, I don't think we need anything. No. Reading. Just okay. that. We'll yep. And we need a second. Yeah, I'll second the motion to close public hearing. So freedom. John Sarantopoulos makes the motion, and Matthew Wendoff seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Expo oppose extensions. Okay. So now, this is where we come up with all the discussions and. Um, Can I just make a comment? Yes. Um, that special permit 211277, just to verify for the community, the public, that the hearing has already been closed and we're just going to move that down to unfinished business under discussion and decision. Okay. All right, special permit application number 2170. So you said you, you just said 77. Yeah. Yes, because that's American Storage Centers. That so hearing has already been closed. That's been closed too. Like I said, you have to keep me up to date here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally confused. So it'd be discussion on special on 1273. So right now you'd be entering discussion on Un 21. Unfinished business. Yep, you're just entering unfinished business now, and you're starting on 12, um, excuse me, 21, 12, 73. And Bridges Frito Lay. Right. And Mr. Chairman, it's yeah. Ken Slater. I'd suggest that the first thing you should do is to see who's seated for this. I'm, I'm guessing, but I might be wrong, that the, the new uh, alternate member has not had an opportunity to w listen to all the tapes and hear everything up to date. Is that a good assumption? That is. <laughs> okay, so so that he shouldn't be seated or considered to be a, a present person uh, because okay. he's effectively disqualified from voting tonight. Then you, it would be the remaining members of the commission would be the number that, that would consider the quorum, and you'd be basing your vote on Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Um, unfinished business, special permit application 21 1273, David Cody, Frito Lay Landowner, 1886 Upper Maple Street, JS Map 62, Lot 5394 Acres, Industrial Zone. For, for a portion of proposed building addition that will exceed the maximum height of 50 feet for said zone with a proposed height of 86 feet, 8.5 inches. Okay, so. Um, would you like me, Mr. Chairman, to talk a little bit about uh, the role of the commission with respect to the environmental intervention petition and and uh, whatever you feel that we should know better than I'm doing? Okay. Well, the the Connecticut adopted the Environmental Protection Act, and and in it, it basically gave citizens the right to be you know uh, little little attorneys general is is what's referred to in some cases. So. There's the ability that you can bring a lawsuit under a Statute 22A16 if you believe that there is unreasonable impact to a natural resource. Uh, but another tool that the Act gives is uh, the tool of environmental intervention under 22A-19. And if a person files a verified pleading, um, which basically means that they swear that the information contained in it is true, um, and it, it states facts that are related to a natural resource, that falls under the jurisdiction of the commission, then that person is entitled to be treated as a party. Uh, now, that's particularly important if this was only a site plan application in the, which there'd be no public hearing. If a person files an intervention petition that satisfies the statute, they'd be entitled to present evidence to the, to the commission, whereas the general public and a site plan ordinarily wouldn't be able to do that. In this instance, that wasn't as critical because both the site plan and the special permit were all being considered or all being addressed to the commission in the context of a public hearing. So the intervener was given full rights just like the public was to present information. Uh, 
So what you're charged with, based on that intervention petition, uh, would be to decide whether the intervener uh, on a matter that's, again, it's within your, within your jurisdiction. And I'll, I'll say, for example, a, a wetlands agency. All they have authority over is the protection of inland wetlands and watercourses. So if someone came in and had a bunch of evidence of how there was going to be air pollution and impacts from air pollution, that wouldn't be appropriate in front of a, an inland wetlands commission. You have a couple of sections in your regulations, uh, both in the site plan and in special permit, that makes reference to uh, pol some pollution concerns. And so there is some ju jurisdiction on your part to evaluate in both site plan and special permit some limited uh, issues of, of environmental concern. Uh, so in my view, the statements, that the filing of the, of the papers by uh, Attorney uh, Miller were sufficient to, to get the intervener status. Now, what you need to consider, based on all of the evidence that was submitted, is whether, uh, the, app, whether the intervener proved that, and I, I always, because it's got, uh, I want to make sure I, I, I read it correctly, because, um, so they have to show that it is reasonably likely that the activity will unreasonably pollute, impair, or destroy the public trust in the air, water, or other natural resources of the state. So it's got to be reasonably likely, and what's being impacted has to be unreasonable. Now, there was a case involving re uh, removal of trees down in Fairfield, and a court in one case said that, that the removal of trees, the trees didn't have inherent value, so they weren't the natural resources of the state that got reversed and so the trees could be considered a natural resource but obviously if every single tree uh, were if no tree could be removed then there'd be no development whatsoever and, and no reasonable use of the land so so that's where uh, an example of what's unreasonable and if somebody came in and was proposing to clear cut a, a, a very large area and someone asserted that there were there were trees that didn't need to come down the commission would have some discretion to say that that level of disturbance of, of the vegetation uh, was was unreasonable. Um, often the, these kinds of cases are, you know, expert cases where people will come in and present evidence. You know, if it was water quality, would come in and and talk about, you know, perhaps there were, were species that, that rely on the water or, you know, plants in the water and that the, the activities were going to harm that, that resource. And then you might have another expert that says, well, that's not true. Then you'd serve essentially as the jury. You'll be listening to two experts who have differing views, and you'd have to take all of that information in and account for it. There's another doctrine that helps you a lot in this particular case on an assumption that you're going to adopt a condition that, I, if you were to approve it, a condition that I expect that you would, and that is both the intervener and the applicant uh, were in agreement and in their proposed conditions were agreeable to having a condition that the plan has to be in compliance with the uh, Department of Energy and Environmental uh, Protection's noise standards. Now, I've not seen any case that says that the th that hearing of noise is an is a natural re is a natural resource. The noise, the intent to protect noise, is interference on use and enjoyment by people, but not directly on a natural resource. So, I, I would. I don't think that just simply saying that there's going to be noise in excess of the DEP noise standards means that you've unreasonably impacted a natural resource. I think if you had an expert that would come in and said if they have that kind of noise and that affected the nesting habitat very close to uh, the property so that the noise would have an impact on you know, a bald eagle or something else, then I think you'd get a tie between noise and a natural resource. But again, you've got, it's, it's easy for you in this particular case because there was a case uh, called Waterbury versus Washington in which involved diversion, a diversion permit of water. And the Department of, uh, in, I think it was just DEP at the time, they had an entire regulatory system established for, uh, for that uh, particular management of that kind of environmental use. The Supreme Court said that if there is a standard that's been established by the agency um, and you show that you're compliant with that standard, then it's not, it's necessarily not unreasonable pollution. 
So you don't even have to get to the question of is noise itself a natural impact, a natural resource, if when you approve it, if you do approve it, you incorporate the requirement that it's got to be in compliance with deep standards. By, by, by requiring compliance with that standard, then the noise issue goes away. So, um, so you, on the other hand, um, if you were, were to deny, um, I would suggest on the environmental intervention petition, it would be other aspects of the petition that were mentioned, such as you know, the amount of, of, of vegetation removal, whether you find that that, that was unreasonable in, in the totality of, of these circumstances. The draft motion that, that was prepared, uh, that staff prepared in, in co consultation with me, uh, expected that you might find, um, based on the, the, the record and based on if you were to approve with the condition, that the intervener did not present sufficient evidence to demonstrate that there is an unreasonable impact on a natural resource. But that's for, your, that's for you folks to, to decide based on what you, what you heard. Um, and you do have, if there were an aspect, if someone was proposing uh, a big project and you know, they were going to be disturbing a vernal pool, uh, a wetlands commission, I'll, I'll use a wetlands commission as an example, of, but it could possibly be in your circumstance too. Uh, they could say that that aspect of the plan unreasonably uh, impacts uh, the natural resource. Now, that's not the end of the story. If you were to decide, contrary to the proposed findings that were in the motions, that the intervener did demonstrate unreasonable impact, then the next test would be whether there are any feasible and prudent alternatives to that. Now, the applicant has taken the position that there, there's not unreasonable impact. So basically, the applicant's eggs are all in that basket. If you were to find that there was unreasonable harm, then the applicant hasn't demonstrated other alternatives. They would need to, they would need to show that you've exhausted feasible and prudent alternatives. So effectively, if you made the determination that there's unreasonable impact on a natural resource, then that would requ essentially require you to den deny. Um, whereas if the applicant came in and said, well, we don't think there's any harm, but here's other ways we could do it if you think that's harm, then you could evaluate whether there's a, an alternative that would lessen uh, or eliminate the impact on the environment. So, but because this was not a, a heavy expert case, there wasn't a lot of evidence that came in. Like, for example, you know, the, there was you know discussion that somebody might have seen some oil sheen on, on the on the water. Well, there was nobody came in and provided any evidence. You know, for all we know, that that oil sheen is actually beneficial to the water body. You, you just don't, don't know. So there really wasn't any of that kind of evidence. So the the kind of evidence I think that that you would have the ability to deny on would really be if you thought that the removal of some of the vegetation, whether there was too much of that and whether that was unreasonable in the, in the totality of the project. But if that's not something uh, that you find is unreasonable, I don't think you can under the noise because the applicant is, is willing to a condition that you will be completely compliant with the noise standard. So if they're going to be compliant, you can't say that the noise is going to be unreasonable. So um, that's my, my elevator speech on, uh, on the 22A19 intervention petition. Now, in some instances, you could, you know, the, the, you've, you've got three, you know, three different motions have been prepared based on what was had. One is a motion to deny the special permit. So if you were going to deny the special permit, either under the standards of your regulations um, or if you found that aspects of the, the, the height, now you, that's what you'd have to be talking about, it, was there proof that the additional height caused an unreasonable impact on a natural resource? Um, and you'd have to decide, was there any evidence that, that there was a tie between the height and the natural resource? Uh, so you've got the this, this special permit. If you, if you deny the special permit, then what you have is an application to consider approving the site plan as modified to comply with the fact that you've denied the special permit. So they would have to, they'd be, this, that site plan would be approved, uh, but they'd have to lower, lower the height. If they can make it work, they can make it work. If they can't, they're going to have to come back to the commission to, to, for another application to modify if, the, if they have to, you know, broaden the footprint. Then the third motion that you have 
Uh, and by the way, in that site plan motion, again, for the same reason I, I described before, I think if there was evidence that persuaded you that impacts on, on trees and vegetation of that was unreasonable, then that would give you a, a basis to deny um, under 22A19. Then the third motion you have was if you were inclined to approve the special permit, the third motion has uh, the uh, language to approve along with, and by the way, the site plan had conditions uh, built in as well. The special permit site plan motion has conditions to approval, and it also has the 22A19 uh, findings built into it. But again, those findings were just staff and, 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 and I looking at what, how we thought we, we saw the, 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 uh, the record, but it doesn't matter what we think the record looks like, it's what you think the record looks like. So you, you, when you talk about 22 and 19, again, I would counsel against anything related to the noise because of the agreement to comply with the condition related to uh, compliance with deep standards. But if other aspects in the petition you thought there was enough evidence uh, to show unreasonable uh, pollution to natural resource, you'd have the ability to change those the findings that, that are contained in the motion and, and make a finding that there was an, an unreasonable pollution. So that's the sort of the, the, the playbook that we were thinking and somebody could jump right to, you know, the, the motion to approve both the special permit and the site plan. Or you could start with, you know, do you want to consider denying the special permit? You really, there's a couple of ways to skin the cat in terms of which motion you want to work from first. And that's really at your pleasure. Any questions on uh, 2219? <laughs> that was a tall yeah. elevator. What's that? <laughs> That's a big oh, elevator. He that went to the top elevator. of the Empire State Building. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, for me, it's, so the bottom line, do we have to independently address the intervenors' proposed mission, or we just work it together as a, with the whole package? In, well, you should make findings on it, but if, for example, you thought the motion that was drafted is perfect, it's the best motion you've ever seen, you could move uh, and you would be making findings in that motion that would address both the, the, the approval of the application and findings, because the draft findings that are in the motions are that the intervener did not demonstrate unreasonable pollution. So it would just be a built-in finding within there. You, you don't have to do that first. It just has to, has to be in there. You have to address it. You can't ignore it. So, so we built it in there. You can discuss it separately if you want to. But we just put it in the, in the motion along with all the other findings. So normally I ask for a motion first. In this case, do I do that or do I ask Absolutely. for? Mr. Chairman, I have a question first. Sure. Okay. Uh, thank you for that explanation. The tall elevator one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that there was two sections in our uh, code. Mm -hmm. Did your explanation just now address those two sections? Well, what, what the sections are is you have um, a section in the site plan, for example, 470.9.5 says that, that you should be trying to avoid uh, the obstruction of light, air, or the emission of light, smoke, odor, dust, or vibration in noxious, noxious or offensive quantity shall be minimized. So I think that um, if you're dealing with, you know, the, the avoiding smoke, odor, gas, dust, vibration. If there was evidence in a special permit application that that kind of emission would occur in a way that would adversely impact the natural resource, then I think you could make a finding. You know, when we looked at the record, we didn't see that. Um, so that's, that's in the site plan. There's a general requirement about landscaping and screening and having adequate plannings. I think that gives you a hook to be able to say that since you have the ability to, to manage screening, that you can consider that in the context of environmental considerations if someone was, was going to, you know, basically, you know, clear cut a, a large area, then you could find that that was unreasonable. Um, and you similarly have in your special permit uh, considerations, you have one, a broad one about environmental considerations. So based on those environmental considerations, um, you'd have the, you would have the jurisdiction, in my view, if someone came in and said that there, are, there was going to be environmental harm 
caused by activities by the plan. But you'd have to consider was there evidence that satisfied you that that was, that that was proven and is it unreasonable? So it, it's not just that you affect a tree, but is the, is the effect on that tree unreasonable? And that's what you'd have to find in order to deny based on 22A19. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so then we want to make a motion for this application. I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we uh, approve special permit and site plan application for Frito. You want me to read the numbers on that? Well, yeah, we have to apply to all these, discuss all these uh, conditions. Okay. Special permit application 21-1273 uh, and uh, site plan application 21-1275. And what conditions are we looking at? <clears throat> All these conditions that so, were worked so diligently on. So I, I moved to I moved to make an amendment to the proposed. Uh, that has to be one of two ways. Either you have to have a second to the motion, <laughs> then you make a, uh, an yeah, amendment, we really, we or he withdraws what he's done okay. so far, and you go through with what you want to make your amendment to. Right. Well, how can we do that? Because we haven't even created a motion yet. And, and with this complicated motion, we've got to make this motion somehow in agreement with everybody. Well, you, you've, the, the, everyone has been distributed uh, a, a yeah. motion. So I don't think you, you need to, to read it all okay. aloud. All um, right. It's just made clear. Mr. Well, Saratopoulos, your, your plan was to make the, was to approve, and, and move the motion, motion that's been prepared. Prior whether we have to read the whole thing. But I am making the motion based on this uh, document. This one here. On the proposal, on the, the approval approval of both the site plan and, the, and, plan the, and, and the special plan. And the plan. one that has all the yellow highlights. Yes. And the red highlights. And, the red, the highlights. and you want to incorporate all of that into your motion, yes. correct? And so what could happen is either that motion be withdrawn and Commissioner Wendorf be given an opportunity to make the motion with an amendment, or this this motion um, gets seconded, and then during discussion, right. there's a motion to, am to amend it. So, if yeah. you want um, to adjust this, mm -hmm. alter. Yep. You're saying you want you need to withdraw it. You need no, it's no. Just, we know right no, now yeah, that, so. that that you can just do an addendum. Sure. Right. Yep. So it can just be seconded, I, and you guys can mark. You, right. You can mark I'm just. I will clarify. I was. I was under the impression we were going to go through. Have to read through this basically no. to present it. That's all. So my amendment was basically going to be to elaborate on your motion, on this. That's all. Okay. That's so what my amendment was going to be for. But I don't motion. need to. But right. But I don't need to make that since okay. we're allowed to admit this entire packet basically. And for the general public, this will be put onto the website. I'll probably put it on the website before I leave tonight. And, and you're free, so with then, right. would that be a so, second then? So, so I will second John's motion. Now, you can hack this thing up, you can wordsmith it in the course of the discussion on this mm -hmm. motion, any aspect of this, and then end up with something that, you know, maybe we'd even, you know, we could follow and show up on the screen or print out another copy before you, before you vote for it. So you don't have to go and make a motion to amend section one to, should try to get some consensus on all the language you're comfortable with and then you know if the motion needs to be amended it, it, it can be amended at that we're point is my recommendation anyway we're open for discussion all right mr chairman you had a motion made the motion so right and, I, and I made yeah. the second yeah uh you know we, we listened to council uh to some degree explain how he's been involved in this the uh the plan zoning commission has been involved in it we've heard testimony uh, I'm assuming that, uh, uh, you know, Inland Wetlands has looked at this, our town engineer and the department has looked at this. Uh, I don't see where uh, uh, any of those examples that were given earlier apply. Uh, I feel comfortable that uh, because uh, this motion has been worked on by uh, 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 our, our town's attorney and there's nothing in here that I see that has been omitted that uh, hasn't been discussed since August. I'm comfortable with uh, 
with leaving it as is, and I think it's your pass. Any other discussion from others? Okay. Um, I just want to address a little bit of history, and I'll try to be brief about this. Lo um, Killingly Planning and Zoning was put into effect in 1975. And I was first appointed, I think, in 1978. And I used to sit next to Reuben Shekelton, who was an elderly farmer, and he was on the town council and was um, part and parcel of creating this body here. And I asked him repeatedly over the decades, why did you put the industrial park next to Alexander's Lake when it was already obvious of what the nature of the land use was around Alexander's Lake. And he said somewhat apologetically, well, the land was flat, which was good for industry. In my mind, that is the original sin, the original mistake that was made in putting those two land uses next to each other. There's nothing that we can do about it now, but all we are, have been doing over the years is just watching it get worse the, the conflict get worse and worse. And I don't know, you know, we can't undo any of that, but I think we need to have some kind, and, and it, this has anything to do with the motion tonight, mm -hmm. but at some point we, we need to, to address, okay, I will end it with, we need to address this because it's just. All right, so one of my discussion is gonna be that I, I'm not completely happy with the fact that you're just saying, okay, we install 50 trees at six foot tall. Um, my motion, my opinion of it is that whatever trees it takes and whatever the proper distancing from each tree should be, which is should be made by somebody more qualified than myself, is what we should be doing. And that is because we're supposed to be creating a buffer. And that whatever it takes to fill that buffer, then that's what it takes. If it takes 30 trees and it meets the specs for separating distances, fine. If it takes 100 trees, then it should do it. Whatever it takes is what it takes. And, and if you got, you're talking about a six foot tree, fine. Six foot tree should be in towards a closer one so that you can put in a, a new growth within the five year period or even to me an initial growth uh, seedlings along the 25 foot bulk closest to the western side of this buffer so that you could have a continuity of growth so that in over a period of time it's going to be a full buffer it's going to be a, an actual buffer it's not going to be okay we've met your obligations and if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't from what i can see in the plans i don't see even under the proposal i see gaps um, right in here. This is for commission members. So, yeah. So, you know, right here. And if you're looking at the parking lot, the new parking lot, and if you're sitting across the street, yeah. we went out with staff, there's still gaps. So, my take is that we shouldn't number the trees, but the trees should be grown as necessary and as needed to create a solid buffer along that western southwestern line the rest of the property is very well protected i mean you've got the eastern side along 395 you've got full growth the south is a uh, private property you know there's no issues the north side is buffered by um, other industrial sites and even the northwest side by the traffic light you're talking um it's buffered so it's just this one section of the property and unfortunately, it's the section of property that all the residents along the lake have, so that we should have whatever is required for buffering to actually do the buffering and not just limit trees. That's my take. And I, I'm not sure that I feel comfortable, no offense to staff, but staff isn't professionals when it comes to identifying what, how you manage this growth. I mean, we want the growth to be there because it takes the pressure off of the, the uh, applicant down the road from the people that live at the lake. Because if, once it's established, it's established. We don't have that issue anymore. It's one less issue when every time you do anything down the road. 
I mean, it benefits everybody. I, I, that's, and that's why I take, other than that, I'm not really, other than the uh, ledge, possible ledge uh, issue, I, I think you've answered all of our questions and the, and the issues um, in this in the motion, I think. Mr. So, Chairman. Go ahead. What amendment could we put in there to satisfy your concern? Take out the 50 feet and put in uh, that we need to have a certified, uh, uh, is it certified or licensed, licensed forester? Forester or, or, or licensed? Arborist. Or yes. Arborist. Mm -hmm. Someone qualified to do this and that we provide enough tree growth. That, like, I'm fine with the six foot trees, but put the six foot trees inland and, okay. and if you could add a seedlings so that five, ten years down the road, you've got a staggered growth growing. And you will have, I mean, eventually, and you may be down the road, you might have to grow ahead and put in more growth, but that's not that expensive of uh, to keep people off your back and, and, and us to meet our regulations. Hmm. I, I agree with your thinking. Is, it, is that a motion you're making? So would that I be would, would that be an amendment that would read something to the effect the applicant shall install additional landscaping on the western portion of Frito Lay property? Um, as needed. As needed, as determined by a tree arborist, landscape architect. To provide, yeah, but I want mm -hmm. to make sure it says provide to provide a con continuity and growth of a buffer, of a tree buffer. Can you define? Can you if, with the with the specific number of trees that were in the conditions before, that's relatively easy to implement. You got the side. You know how many trees you can put in there. With what you're talking about, should we be defining what the western portion means better um, and more detailed than, than we have? Because that's my only concern now is to have it be so generalized that. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's easy when you drive it down Maple Street and you can see the gaps. Well, mm -hmm. especially I, this time of year, it's it's very. I know what you met there was staff, right. um, and staff has also walked with them, and we explained to them where your concerns were with the site, and they right. understood that. That's why we have it farther in where um, they submit annual reports and conduct a field inspection of the plantings to determine if additional plantings are necessary to main, maintain an effective barrier. We have tree wardens on staff. We have a natural resource officer. We, if you still want the arborist, that's fine. Arborist or landscape architect. Um, well, what's I just needed? Don't want what happened in 2010 that we go through all the effort and the verbiage and nothing happens. And mm -hmm. if that happened if then, maybe we wouldn't even be looking at it now. Mm -hmm. I, and again, that's um, 2010, 2012. I think if you remember, there was a, a slideshow by a PowerPoint here where he showed this is what our plan showed and these are the trees that were planted in that location and that's what they had um so well, th at that point it wasn't that western portion wasn't part of those it it was in those trees that were planted they're now dead so what that's one of the places that's going to be the first place that they have to fill in the blanks right, so fill in the spots the trees go back and replace the 50 you know those yeah. trees so i think there was like 12 trees or something like that Whatever, whatever it is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it, it's but you know if they had grown and done what they were supposed to do properly instead of dying, you may not have seen it. Um, Unfortunately, I've got so many maps in front of me, I can't. Yeah. Okay. Out. So the ones I were looking at, but there is to fill in the gaps. The gaps down here by the just above the parking lot. Yeah. There's a big gap there. Um, this gap, right where the curvature of the ra uh, railroad radius, mm -hmm. uh, I, for the most part, I think that's the bigger issue with that whole section down there. I mean, they're showing trees here. I'm not sure that's saying we're going to plant one row of trees and that's our buffer. Mm -hmm. But the whole intent, at least in my mind, is that we have a double row so that it grows in and it becomes thick and it's laid, you know, the second row being seedlings, which I mean, you can get a, you used to be able to get them from the Yukon Extension Service for next to nothing, you know, $10 by a thousand trees. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but then that grows, hopefully, and if it doesn't, then we have a, the forester to fall back on to say, okay, this isn't working, we need to do something else. But all I'm trying to do is get us so we can maintain a buffer and end this whole 
visual thing that's going on there and maybe help the sound as well. I mean, you've got coniferous trees in there. You're gonna, that's gonna help absorb noise. Right. So it helps on both Well, levels. I think that's why they were offering, um, because of the discussions that we had, we were talking about the hardwoods did the height, the coniferous trees, the evergreens would do the lower sections because they're sometimes more slow growing and they'd also create more of the sound. So that's why they were thinking yeah, of the Yeah, the visual end. Like, yeah. like this time of year, if you've got deciduous out there, all the leaves fall, you've got tree yeah. limbs here. Look, you're looking right through. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, this is a good balance. They, they're offering to put in the 50 trees. I just say, and instead of putting a number down, do whatever it takes, a double row, you know, you know, six foot trees and a, and a, and a row of, of seedlings. Um, so. Then, if the, I don't know, the other commission. Go ahead, John. Mr. Chairman, that you're also saying question? that you want it to be maintained. That's that correct? That's the most important part, yeah. is okay. that it be maintained. Right. And that's what she's talking about, who, okay. who to maintain it. Um, how about where, where Scott he has his computer coming up with wording? Yes, that sounds good. All right, so taking a crack at this, you know, one of the issues, I mean, I, I think the applicant is going to have to, you know, the, the, the problem is when you don't really define things really specifically, there's a fear that it's an open checkbook. And well, you're going to make them do something, but but I'm, I'm hoping this language might not be that that open checkbook based on what the chairman has suggested in terms of gaps. It is kind of narrows it a little bit, but the applicant shall install landscaping to fill in the gaps and buffers on the southwestern portion of the Frito Lake property in accordance with a plan intended to maximize both site and sound buffering approved by licensed arborist or forester and the yeah. planning and development staff. You're going to have them. I get, I get the same well, I know, right but over I just Yeah. But the proposed, let me get the mic. So the proposed that they show on that as the green uh, showing, I'm assuming is a single row of trees it, uh, on the, between the tracks and the new parking lot. Mm -hmm. Again, that too also would be a double row with a single row there of the six footers and then seedlings or something to get it to establish so that there's a full barrier there. Mm -hmm. Commission members, comment? I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think that that's, uh, I, I think it's easier to address these things with small amendments to specifically hone in on like this, I, this thing. So I agree uh, with you that I think m there needs to be additional buffers along the property line. And I think especially that there's uh, a multi, a variation of trees to create that double layer for sure. Yeah. What did you think of that language? Did you fuss with it more? Or am I, I really it? didn't. Okay. Listen, I'm no, no, no problem. So what I what I changed that sentence, that second sentence in the first in the condition under landscape, and so be B part B uh, small Roman numeral I. The applicant shall install additional landscaping to fill in the gaps and buffers on the southwestern portion of the Frito Lake property in accordance with a plan intended to maximize both site and sound buffering approved by a licensed arborist or forester engaged by the applicant and approved by planning and development staff. So, so, so could I make a suggestion? Which is that um, somebody can come up with a number of trees and, and, and species of trees and say, okay, that, that would do the job. But if in the future it turns out that that is inadequate, I would like there to be a mechanism for more trees to be planted of whatever would work better. I mean, I, I don't want us to get trapped into. Well, I think they're not. I think he's saying they're not. You're not trapped in. Yeah, he's that. saying yeah, there's buffers. A he's saying maintaining buffers, which to me, if that's true to form, but, yeah, then. But, so you also but have, but you to also main, have by main t maintenance also mean you might need to expand the right. acreage of how many. Right. Okay. We've got that in there. We've got that once the additional, uh, this is small mm -hmm. two letter I's. Once the additional landscape and forest plantings are completed in accordance with the direction of the planning and development staff, 
the applicant shall submit to planning and development staff an updated landscape forest management plan to show the then current conditions of said landscape and forest plantings. Said plan then shall become the basic plan for all future landscape and forest management to maintain, preserve, and enhance the buffer zone and visual barrier. Said plan shall also include annual monitoring of said areas by said applicant. Then we also have under small i3, the specific locations where such trees are to be installed shall be determined by the planning and development staff in conjunction with the, their operist, well, I, well, we would have to put that in there now, at least once every five years after installation of those plantings. The planning and development staff shall conduct a field inspection of the plantings to determine if additional plantings are necessary to maintain an effective barrier. If so, the applicant shall plant install those plantings in consultation with staff. So we have set in mm -hmm. the definitive. The comments that were made before is just like forest management plan, blah. Right. Um, we, we've put that in there, we, that we're expected, staff is expected to go out at least once every five years. Now, there's so much going on there, we're going to be watching it anyways because we have to go out for other sites. We also have the applicant shall submit annual reports to the planning and development staff demonstrating the compliance with the landscape and forest management plan. Okay. So we have all so that. So it's flexible and it can grow. It can grow. Okay. So the initial is a, is a saying a double row or some sort of a, I'm asking for a double row. So it's it, is that saying that or is it just a single row? It, it, right now it just says it's a plan that a licensed arborist or forester would determine maximizes sight and sound buffering, uh, but you can say and shout we can have no less than, than two rows of plantings. Well, I, yeah, and, I, and again, I'm not looking for two rows of six foot, like the, the six foot row and then a seedling row, something so that's going to follow it up and grow in time. Yeah. The only other question I would be in uh, that is that the berms behind child world, used to be child world, uh, whatever they call it now, what is it? Um, the first mill, the first. Automatic rules? No, nope, way down the other end. Walgreens. Walgreens. The Walgreens plant, there's berms there. All those trees had to be cut because they died. Right. They were on top of that. What kind of trees were they? We don't want to be doing something like that where they're not. I'm not sure what they were. I'd have well, to verify I mean, that plant. That that's something that you'd have to that. go with the Everest. Well, it's also, um, I think what happened is that not so much that they, they died. Some of them were dying because of storms and whatnot that came up, and other ones just got too big for the type of berm that they had. Okay. So that's the, you don't have that berm situation here. They have a oh. natural berm here, so yeah. you shouldn't have that problem. Okay. And that's the other thing, too. I think some of the forest management plans before had plants that weren't native. Appropriate, yeah. To, uh, so they're not going to, I'm sorry, those don't, those don't last if they're not native. So. Okay. If that's all, everything's included that we're asking for, then that, is that all right with the, the commissioners, commission members? All right, so do, what do yeah. we need an addendum uh, uh, to the motion, the main motion? A motion, um, yes, an addendum that under section B1 shall read as follows. And Ken, do you want to read it from your? Yeah. We'll have Ken read it. He typed it. Yeah. And, and, and what you got also is three, two. Um, yeah. So the, that, and, and I, based on our discussion, too, I'm suggesting an additional sentence that I hadn't read yet. So the, the, the second sentence under I would be the applicant shall install additional landscaping to fill in the gaps and buffers on the southwestern portion of the Frito Lay property in accordance with a plan intended to maximize both sight and sound buffering prepared by a licensed arborist or forester engaged by the applicant and approved by the planning and development staff. And then I add a sentence the applicant shall exercise due diligence to maintain the trees required by the plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then below, go to three, what three would make not part, small letter three, uh, the specific locations with such trees are to be, ins uh, to be installed shall be established in the plan set forth in part one. So rather, so yep. it just relates back to, to one. Should that be, they should be installed or at least located. If you talk about locations, right, then the part three says locations. 
Right, so under part three it says the specific locations must, in other words, this says the plan is prepared by, the, by their licensed arborist or, um, or forester has to identify where, they're, where the plants are going. That's what I told you. Okay. So I just modified it because- So somebody want to make that motion for the addendum to that? I'll make a motion to add the addendum. Uh, yeah, so and I'll second the amendment. So we've got a motion and a second. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote on the addendum. Anything else for us before we move on? Well, we can vote on just this one thing, and if we wanted to address okay. anything else so in the main motion, we can still do that. It makes the law Is that right? Addendum, but Is right. there any other addendum that you want to make? No, I was just making sure. That's all. Yeah, roll call for the addendum. Edgar Lawrence? Uh, yes, as uh, explained by the attorney. John Sarantopoulos? Yes. Matthew Wendorf? Yes. Keith Thurlow? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Any other agenda? Anything else that anybody else wants to discuss on this motion? Appreciate motion. Okay. Any other agenda? Personally, would like to see this plan, at least the plan, come forward with this. I know we already made a motion, but a plan come forward with this before you actually start building. The, the landscape plan you refer to? The trees, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can add another addendum. So, I know how I can modify it. Um, So one thing we could, do, we could do would be to have the plan submitted to the commission and approved. Well, does it, I don't think necessarily if it's to the commission as long as it's, there's a, a plan and you just want to see it get done. They want to see it get done yep. so you could always say um, something like say before building permit or right. something to that effect. So plans still be submitted to Planning and Development uh, Department before and any building. Started, and work started before. Yeah. Uh, before building commences. So. Yeah. Well, spring is coming. You don't want to miss the entire year waiting for the buildings to get done. That'll be a few. Um, so well, do you want to do it before? Um, I don't, know when, I don't know when I don't know when they're do I just want to say I'd like to see it commence before okay. we actually start working on a building that's all I'm saying mm -hmm. before the beginning of construction before the physical building that gives them while well, their contractors there they can do it all at the same time at least initiate it so so would the, you wouldn't want, would you want site work to start work happening and that doesn't require a building permit? Or do you want to say no construction of any sort should start until that plan is submitted? Well, I hate to lock them down too much, but I'm on the same token. I want to see it done. So whatever you think to say to get it done. I'm, uh, I mean, if, if we're going through all the work, I might as well get it initiated. So to me, it, to me realistically, you hire a subcontractor to come in and do this. You can do it simultaneously. But that's my logic, not necessarily theirs. But you want the plan in place, though. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think you've got enough leverage over them. If they can't start constructing the building, um, they're going to have to get that plan in place. So it seems to me that no building permit should be issued is enough okay, well, protection. What do you, you I mean, what do you think? I mean, what do you think? Um, you, know, I, you could say literally yeah. no construction, but if you want them to I let think them. that site work is probably permissible prior to the building, to be honest. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask a question. Isn't this something that uh, staff should be dealing with? I mean, well, the problem language is clear in there that they have to do this. It, you know, and I think that's a good idea, having to submit a plan. And staff is responsible for making sure that it's implemented. But the I mean, staff that's doesn't always have do. time to do that. I mean, well, you also changes. had staff changes. You had a staff we change. Had, we had the same thing happen. We spent time, a lot of time on this, 
in 2010 and in 2012 on the same issue. And nobody even knows about it today. We had yeah, to actually so show them. Correct that with your language, just not. So yeah. you, could, you could add a sentence that says, no building permit shall be issued before such plan is approved. And I'll just add that into, into that yeah. same paragraph. Okay, so I'll make a motion to add that. Good, second. I'll second the motion. <laughs> Berger makes the motion. Um, Matthew makes the second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. This is on the second amendment. Yes. Matthew Wendorf. Yes. Virga Lawrence. Yes. John Sarantopoulos. Yes. And Keith Thurlow. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, anything else? I don't know. Anything else, Keith? Well, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very tough. He's on a roll. <laughs> John? No. Okay, then we have a uh, for the main motion. For the main motion as amended. As amended. We need a roll call. Roll call. Could you just read it briefly or a well, little this synopsis? Whole, this, this whole thing. Okay. Do you want to read it? No. Do you, do you want me to <laughs> She's read got the, one on her desk. Do you want me to read the amended paragraph uh, out loud or are you good on that? Because everything else you've got in front of you, the, the only thing that would be different so is. Paragraph, right? which, which, which the, one, the, the ones that we just did would be. Um, on page three of five, it's under section B landscape and forest plantings. Yeah. Paragraph small yeah. i. Mr. Chair, I have a question okay. for council. All right. Would we, uh, would we uh, put ourselves in jeopardy if this thing wasn't read into the record right now for the benefit of people maybe watching it online or people sit, sitting here? Well, you know, you raise a good point. Je it's less jeopardy if you want. The public has listened to the whole thing, uh, this whole hearing, and you know, the they might be listening and they might want to be knowing what you're going to do. I don't think that would be a ground to be able to challenge this because you didn't read the motion because what matters is you've got the motion, it's available for the public to see it. Uh, but it, it's, it's your prerogative, but it might actually be a good idea so everybody hears exactly what you're doing tonight and they don't have to come into town hall and see it. Granted, it's a three-page motion, but um, and I'd be happy to read it if you, if you want me to or Chairman read it or whomever if you Which think one? it's a good idea. Who do you want it to read? Well, I certainly don't want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. But you have to give me that last paragraph. You're going to have to do that. Well, you're talking about reading all of these one, two, <coughs> five pages? We ready, people? Yes. Whereas the Killingly Planning and Zoning Commission receives special permit application number 21-1273 of David Cody, Frito-Lay, Inc. is the landowner, also known as applicant, 1886 Upper Maple Street, Killingly, <coughs> Connecticut, GIS map 62, lot 53, approximately 94 acres, industrial zone, to allow the construction of a new automatic stock retrieval system, ASRS. Whereas the Killingly Planning and Zoning Commission received site plan application 21-1275 of Dave and Cody, Frito-Lay, Inc., landowner, the applicant, 1886 Upper Maple Street, Killingly, Connecticut, GIS map 62, lot 53, 94 acres, industrial zone, to allow the construction of buildings and related site improvements related to its existing industrial use of the <coughs> site. Okay. Okay. Whereas ASRS system, the system, will be an eight rack high system enclosed in a building at the height of 86 feet, eight and one half inches. Whereas the Killingly zoning regulations, regulations allow construction to such a height under section 450 dimensional requirements, subsection 450.3.1 height in industrial zones by special permit request. Whereas two other ASRS units were previously approved for this site, the original ASRS unit be building built in the height of 75 feet 10 inches and to the ASRS building built in 2012 at the height of 76 feet and 11 inches Hold on. Okay. whereas the Alexander's Lake Association Inc filed a petition to intervene filed pursuant to Connecticut general statute 22 a-19 verified by its attorney Mary Mintel Miller 
in both the special permit and site plan applications. Whereas the commission conducted a public hearing and conferred with and received information from the applicant, intervener, and the public regarding both the special permit and site plan applications. Therefore, it was moved that the commission approve the site plan and approve the special permit application subject to the following conditions, each of which are integral to the special permit application and subject to the following findings. With regard to the applications, one, the site plan application is substantially complete and includes material and information required by the commission under these regulations to reach the findings contained herein. Two, the special permit application is substantially complete and includes material and information required by the commission under these regulations to reach the findings contained herein. Three, subject to the conditions of approval as set forth below, the proposed special permit is in general conformance with the requirements of Article 7 of the regulations. Four, the approval is made with the following conditions. A, sound attenuation model and testing. And I'm just going to put one. Applicant shall prepare a sound noise attenuation model, the model, to include the existing and new equipment proposed for the facility and all engineering controls to be employed. The model shall clarify, identify, shall, excuse me, the model shall clearly identify the recommended controls to demonstrate compliance with existing local and state ambient noise levels. The model is to be calibrated with actual on-site measurements taken during both daytime and nighttime hours. The final results the report of this model shall be submitted to the Planning and Development Department for review prior to on-site construction activities. Two, following the construction of the plant expansion that is the subject of the site plan application and the completion of installation of associated new manufacturing and rooftop equipment, the applicant shall conduct a post-construction monitoring and it's, we're calling it the sound survey test, otherwise known as the test within 75 days of the full operation of the applicant's expanded facility. This includes the ASRS and other buildings. Results of such testing shall be compared to the model. To confirm that the facility is in compliance with the noise regulations promulgated, excuse me, by the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, DEEP, which are set forth in the regulations of the Connecticut State Agency's Section 22A-69-1 at SEC, the Connecticut Deep Regulations, and the Town of Killingly Noise Ordinance, Article 7, Noise Ordinance. If you want to. Not really, but you sound like you get forced. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have water. I he can the, do it, too. I got the computer in front of me. He's going to do the, he the, can take, he he's can take do the, the turn. one revised section anyway. Yeah. The test shall be conducted in conformance with the requirements of the Connecticut Deep Regulations and in substantial conformity with acoustical test methods and procedures, specifically in general accepted outdoor sound survey standards, including ASTM E1503-14. Two said tests shall be completed at a minimum of three residential properties on the west side of Over Maple Street and shall be completed by an acoustical consultant. These locations shall be determined in consultation with the town engineer and zoning enforcement officer or their designee. Three, the date and time of the test shall be done in a consultation with the town engineer and zoning enforcement officer and set date and time shall be confirmed at least two days in advance of the proposed test. Uh, little three I's. All modeling and final reports of the test results shall be submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission through the Planning and Zoning Planning and Development Office of the Town of Killingly within 30 days of the completion of the test being completed. Uh, little four I B. Uh, if the test demonstrates that the facility as improved is not in substantial conformity with the Connecticut deep regulations nor consistent with the pre-construction modeling. The applicant shall employ such noise mitigation measures that is determined are required to achieve compliance. Within 30 days of employing such mitigation measures, the applicant shall conduct another round of tests in accordance with the conditions listed above. If compliance is not achieved, Additional measures shall be employed and another round of tests shall be completed in accordance with the conditions listed above until compliance is demonstrated. Mr. Slater, I don't know where it, it changes. Yeah, it should be an S there, got it. B1 and and landscape and forest, uh, this is part B, landscape and forest buff planting type and buffering. Uh, one, the applicant shall maintain the existing landscape and forest plantings as shown in the 2010 and 2012 site plans and shall add to those plantings 
as described herewith. The applicant shall install additional landscaping to fill in the gaps and buffers on the southwestern portion of the Frito-Lay property in accordance with a plan intended to maximize both site and sound buffering prepared by licensed arborist or forests forester engaged by the applicant and approved by the planning and development staff. No building permit shall be issued before such plan is approved. The applicant shall exercise due diligence to, main the, to maintain the trees required by the plan. Two, once the additional landscaping and forest plantings are completed in accordance with the direction of the planning and development staff, the applicant shall submit to planning and development staff an updated landscape and forest management plan to show the current conditions of said landscape and forest plantings. Said plan shall become a basic plan for all future landscape and forest management to maintain, preserve, and enhance the buffer zone and visual barriers. Said plan shall include annual monitoring of said areas by said applicant. Three, the specific locations where such trees are to be installed shall be established in the plan set forth in part one. At least once every five years after installation of these plantings, the planning and development staff shall conduct a field inspection of the plantings to determine if additional plantings are necessary to maintain an effective barrier. If so, the applicant shall plant, install those plantings in consultation with staff. Four, the applicant shall submit annual reports to the planning and development staff demonstrating compliance with the landscape and forest management plan. C, the applicant shall stipulate that all construction traffic, including materials workers and the removal of materials, shall be routed through Attawagan Crossing Road access point to the Frito-Lay property. The applicant shall use mechanical means of removal for all cuts located within the project area. Blasting is not allowed unless additional approvals are granted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. E, in connection with the construction of the project, contracts with con construction contractors shall include language directing the subcontractors to utilize carpooling measures for their employees during construction to reduce the overall number of vehicles traveling to and from the site. The, applicant, the applicant shall require the construction workers to use Attawagan Crossing Road access point to the Frito-Lay property. In connection with the Haskell response dated January 14, 2022, to the CLA Engineers Inc. CLA review comments dated January 12, 2022. The additional information which Haskell indicates will be provided in response to CLA review comments 2, 8, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 22 shall be submitted to the town engineer for review and approval prior to the issuance of building permit. The, application, the applicant shall submit a construction and phasing management plan to address any additional concerns raised by the commissioner or the engineer town engineer following approval. The applicant shall post a bond, the amount to be determined by the town engineer and planning and development staff to assure compliance with the above conditions slash modifications, period. Do you want me to continue or does somebody else want to? I'll do it if you want. I can sure. continue. Okay, you want to? Go ahead. With respect okay. to the petitions for intervention, special permit application number 21-1273 as to intervene as Connecticut General Statute 22A-19 Notice of Intervention and Special Application number 22-1273, the Commission finds. The Commission has reviewed the allegations contained in the petition. Number two, the Commission has considered all evidence submitted by the intervener and the applicant and the public that was relevant to the allegations in the petition. Number three, the intervener did not prove that the Activities authorized by the approval of the special permit with conditions set forth are reasonably likely to unreasonably pollute, impair, or destroy the public trust in the air, water, or the natural resources of the state. State plan application number 21-1275 as to the intervener's Connecticut General Statute 22A-19 Notice of Intervention and site plan application 21-1275. The commission finds that commission has reviewed the allegations contained in the petition the Commission has considered all evidence submitted by the intervener, the applicant, and the public that was relevant to the allegations in the petition. Number three, the, the intervener did not prove that the activities authorized by the approval of the site plan are reasonably likely to unreasonably pollute, impair, or destroy the public trust in the air, water, or other natural resources of the state dated at Killingly, Connecticut, this the 22nd day. You want today's date? Uh, February 2nd of uh, uh, February 2022 okay you figure it out <laughs> Killing planning is on a commission by a secretary and chair Does that work? that's it that's the complete motion now we need a roll call on the motion okay. as amended
Vedica Lawrence? Yes. John Sarantopoulos? Yes. Matthew Wendoff? Yes. And Keith Thurlow? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Motion's approved. Good luck. Thank you very much for all your no time offense. and attention through the process. No offense, but I'll be glad not to have to see you. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's doing feedback. Yeah. Put the phone maybe. Want to take a minute break or a couple minutes? Let them look it up. Sure. Five minute break? Yeah. I can get more water. It was. It was. I'm going to tell you, I think that was absolutely essential what you guys did. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. an overburden so I mean seems to me they want to be a good neighbor. Yes. 
so people, I mean, it was, there was still plenty of zoning until 1975, and people didn't know what they were doing. I can't understand that. There was a lot of sympathy, you know, but... Put, it, put, it, put it in industrial zone yeah. around Tanglewood Lake and see how, how far... So what, well, you know, Get this stack the, of papers out of here. I think the chair, yeah. you know, in that... Good luck. ...was Reuben Shackleton, I don't know, and he was a dairy farmer, an elderly, elderly Yankee. A lovely, lovely man. I love him dearly. But he lived in a Go get it if you want. I'll die in dehydration. It'll be fine. Wait a minute. I mean, go ahead if you want. There's yeah, ice in the freezer. Here, He's so got to go get a drink. Around, he was in New England and around here. It's like so all of these things. Like, like I was in Willamette. Really uh, no, 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 that was a lot to read for any one person. The stone mill complex that was set to exist. It was too much. It was been the place to work in Willamette. Okay, you know, it's been rehabbed. I printed um, this. But the mountain of clout of those complexes. This? Yep, those are Brian's comments. You know, it was like they were the only game in town. I'm, di I'm digressing here. So where are we with this? We closed public hearing and now we're... Mm -hmm. the public hearing and we're at the discussion. We don't have any prepared motions for this? Who would do that? Do you like that now? An entire no. town council did that. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Especially a complicated thing. one like that. Agenda. Yeah. Okay. John, are you back there? Yeah. Please. We're all set. Okay, call it back to order. Um, unfinished business, special permit application 21-1277, American Storage Centers, LLC, landowner, the same, 551 Westcott Road, JS map, 214, lot 5, 3.8 acres, general commercial zone, construction of six new buildings and conversion of an existing building to establish a self-service facility, 420.2.2 Q. What do you need? I'm done with that now, so. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion on, on the floor? Okay. Or do you want discussion first on this one? Would you like a review? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, it would be good. Okay, this is um, the application of American Storage Centers, LLC. Location is 551 Westcott Road. It's across the street from East Con, um, which is now vacant. It's also across the street from the marble countertop people. It's the old buy right. Okay, the old buy right. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. All right. Um, basically, they came in to ask for a special permit for the construction of six new buildings and a conversion of an existing building to establish a mini storage or a self-service storage facility. Um, the matter came before the commission on Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. The commission heard the testimony of the applicant's representative and the public regarding same. After all the testimony was heard, the hearing was closed. Tonight's discussion is strictly between staff and the commission. No further testimony can be taken and a motion to be made. Directly below are staff's comments. Um, we had, number one, a concern regarding the use of millings on the site. Staff has supplied the email from the town engineer, David Capaccioni, where he requested a hot mix asphalt be used. Um, permissible lot coverage in a general commercial zone is 65% by right or the lot coverage in a general commercial zone may be increased from 65 to 75% with a special permit by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Provided the applicant proposes to pay the town a fee, one in the amount equal to the fair market value of the lot multiplied by the percentage of the excess of the lot coverage, and two, to be placed in a fund to be used by the town for the purpose of preserving or acquiring land for open space, conservation, recreation, aesthetic, historical, environmental, agricultural, or other purposes. And this is in, found in section 420.2 of your town regulations. Um, the only reason why we brought that up is because it's 65% by right, and I believe there was supposed to be a permeable surface 
but then again, Dave, um, our town engineer said that this type of construction that it's gonna be, he would prefer the hot asphalt mix. So that's something that the uh, commission should be um, under concern. Um, and then in fire and traffic safety, safety um, we had concerns to allow fire trucks access to all the buildings on the premises been requested that at least a 20-foot driveway or road between the buildings and the planted buffer. The building on the farthest to the left is only 15 feet wide. Uh, fire and ambulance services, there should be a Knox box at the gate to allow fire and ambulance crews access to the premises. Uh, we also talked about snow plowing and storage. There are aisles between the buildings and at each back corner, uh, make sure that it's large enough to allow for proper snow plowing and where would the snow piles be put? if the snow stop piles were to be put on site. Um, lighting on buildings, all lighting on buildings should be tilted downward and make sure not, no lighting goes off the premises. Um, there's a list of conditions under section 420.2.2Q um, and then subsection two, special permit uses, self-service storage facilities conditions. These must be, uh, must be adhered to by the applicant. Staff suggests that reference to those conditions be made in the commission's motion. Um, let's see. Then we had more on the back where, let's see. That was just an overview of what the site was. We did receive in from Brian Card, who is a commission member, um, for special permit 211277 his recommended conditions for approval of the application. Um, he's also suggesting additional signage and curbs needed along the south side to be worked on with town staff. Lights on the building should be motion activated to avoid being on at all times during night hours. Duration of motion activated lights on time shall be less, should be less than 30 minutes. Um, modify the gravel base as discussed during the meeting. Again, that goes back to uh, our number one, the concern of millings. And then snow storage locations shall be identified on site plan as agreed to with town staff. So, I have, I have a, a bunch of issues. I mean, like the, since we should be looking at the asphalt as recommended by the town engineer. Mm -hmm. um, the narrow driveways are what, 12, 15 feet? Um, I believe the driveway between the left, the building to the father's left, the longest building, is yep. only 15 feet between the building and the setback. And in order to make sure that it's a safe area for two cars to go through and for fire and safety, um, it was suggested a 20 foot. Right. So we need, I think we need to verify, well that's 24. Between the two buildings on the top, there's 25. There's 21 in the back. Then it goes 25, 24, 24, 24. I believe over to the right I believe they're saying that's 40 feet to the property line. So you take out the 25 foot buffer. That's where, that's where you're gonna have the problems again because that's 40 feet grand total. 20, you have to have maintain a 25 foot buffer. Just so that only leaves you 15 feet of driveway. It's, it's the outside. So it's oh, it definitely is. more of the outside. Be might be smaller the buildings of units that are on there to allow for proper clearances at the perimeter of the buildings I mean mm -hmm. yeah well basically we're at a closed public hearing so now it's up to us to make a motion to do whatever we're doing and put your conditions on it or modify make require modifications to the do. site plan so okay if you get an idea what you want to do then uh, Let's take a look at Brian's again. Yeah, I need to uh, work this up for a second here. The 
this was a phased project, if I remember right? Uh, yes, the project was going to be built as the um, as more and more need for self storage was available or was needed required. Right, and all the snow is supposed to go within the detention area. You can't legally haul snow off site anymore. Well, is there an easy access way for them to get the snow from inside the gated, fenced community? In, well, not community, but the area into the... the stormwater drainage areas? I mean, that's the only place they have to do it. They ha right now they have two openings in their gate in the front in the bottom left near that small stormwater pond they have a proposed exit sensor so I would say that's an automatic opening gate and then they have another gate in the upper left hand corner looking at the map of the larger stormwater the question is would those gates work for work for the plows and the removal of the snow Yeah, I mean, we all got tired and rushed when we, when we closed this without really being as thorough as we should have. Well, the issues were raised. I just don't think it, it was necessarily responded to. <coughs> but we can make conditions and modifications to the site plan. Is mix being requested for the whole area? Mm -hmm. And I read in here somewhere where he wants uh, oh, 20 feet for uh, fire and safety. There's only one area that I can see that has. Well, it's just it's the radiuses, too. Remember, you're trying to plow around the building, so you've got to have the radiuses to be able to have a truck. And plow yeah, but for around. fire and fire and. Right, but yeah. it's also winter maintenance. But it's also, um, if you look at, I have an access for customers. if you're looking at at the color color map, so right. to say, to to the far left, it clearly states there's only 15 feet between the building and the grassway. Yeah. Okay, so that needs to be somehow either moved or whatever bless you and then over to the right it says it's 40 feet from the building I believe to the end of the property line but if there's a 25 foot buffer which is required that only again only leaves you 15 feet of asphalt so there is a concern there there's not enough room so I know this would affect their economics in terms of income but if if they need, need more space on the sides, then the easiest way to do that is knock off, you know, the end units. That is a condition that this commission can make as a modification to the site plan for public health, safety, and welfare. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't venture a guess as to whether, you know, how many, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, if uh, town staff could weigh in on that, I would think that's just the simply the easiest way let's to. See what, let's see what. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're working on a. I'm try. I, yeah, I'm working on. <laughs> on numbers, not my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine me in a calculus class. <coughs> <laughs> it I mean, we're, we're allowed to discuss this, right? We can. We're, yeah. We so, like, I I guess I, I'm st the verbiage for snow 
removal and storage is the one thing that I'm stuck on at this point, how we want to address that on site. It would make sense to me that at the end of each, you know, straight run of plowable surface area, there's an adequate area for storage at the end of that. They're not going to be plowing circles around this thing to have snow storage. So it's, I, it would be a matter of, uh, you know, how at the end of one of these or two of these, as they the do on the- We shouldn't be designing <coughs> for them. We right. We don't want to be responsible for that. Yeah, but I feel like if we just say like, hey, you know, adequate snow storage, like, yeah, well, there's plenty of snow storage on the site, you know, like it's easy to dismiss and say that there's enough of it when oh. in all reality there's not, you know, but. No, okay. I think, the, I think this, the site is definitely too dense for everything that's yeah. within it. It's too, it limits access and um, maintenance and, and just for customers, clients to interact, especially the radius is there, 90 degree radius is that within right. 15 foot. So well, it's really hard to see at this grade. 20 foot. That's tight. I mean. Yeah, I, I, in, in one of these I was looking to include that at the perimeter radius, at, at the perimeter, so I'm, if I was to read one of these it would say to maintain a minimum clearance of 20 foot from the perimeter of structures to the site setbacks and maintain a minimum radius of 10 foot at all corners along the perimeter clearance, right? So those radiuses around the clearance, you know, and maybe it's not a specific number, but it needs to be a radius yeah, corner we beyond that, you know be, what I mean? We don't want to be the responsibility for designing. That's my, that would mm -hmm. be my concern. I mean, but we pretty much, I mean, we, there, if there's minor modifications, it's one thing. If they're major modifications, it's a whole nother ball game. What would you say that? I mean that. Uh, I can ask the attorney if what you. Mean. Yeah. How, are you, <coughs> how do we? Chairman actually gave described it much better without a tall elevator. In that, that really, <laughs> that that really is. If you can define the change, and when sometimes we do, sometimes we do our training. If you got a site plan and you realize in looking at it that there is a section between station 100 and 102 where the the, the it's too steep under your regulations. You approve it with the modification that the grade be changed between 102 and, and, and 100 to X percent, whatever it is. You can define what the change is in a way that they can, everybody knows what's going to be approved. If it gets to the point where you are, the kind of change that needed is going to involve a major redesign of mm -hmm. the plan, the better thing is to deny with Without clear prejudice. direction of, of you know that you know, the, almost everything is you could say without prejudice which kind of encourages somebody to, to, to come back and do that but it but if you can give them a road map of the kind of things changes that they need to make but there were just too many for you to define then they come back with with, with the changes that you do so, so if we did it without we don't have to do it without prejudice anymore you know, right. as long because it you can always come back right away is the point. Right, I, I, if it's a different application, he's entitled to come back. So um, it, some, sometimes without prejudice is like if somebody comes in with a pol, you know, the where there's a particular thing that you're kind of encouraging to come back. You're not leaving them in in the midst. Like if you just said deny the special permit here. They're going to have no idea whether they're ever going to get an approval because you think it's a bad idea. Uh, yeah. But if the discussion all says the only problem I have with this is I'm worried about the snow removal or it needs to be wider, you've given them a roadmap. You don't have to say the magic word without prejudice. You're kind of directing them how to change it. He, you, you can if you want. We can turn around and re reapply. Reapply with, with a substantially changed application. If he applied with the exactly the same thing, then that's a problem. But, it, but if he listens to you and what you need to fix or what you're dire directing him to fix, then and he revises and refiles. Okay. So it's all a matter of whether you really think you can define it in a way that's specific enough that there's going to be no question on the part of staff when that plan gets plopped down, do it, it complies <laughs> with what you took, what you said. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's possible, to be honest. In my, in my opinion, I don't think that we can Let's cover all the things. So do whatever you think. Well, what about that? Uh, storm water retention area can't um, that be used for uh, well it's snow removal but the idea is yeah the, the issue is is access around the whole place you have very well, tight access <coughs> to get around so it, i mean th that storm detention basin 
should hold the storage of snow. Yeah. That all depends on the volume of snow we get. And uh, I mean, quite frankly, I, I, So how do you judge that? Well, it's not, I don't think that's the issue. The issue is how do you get it there? Yeah. Do you have to get it with payloaders and haul it around? But now, yeah. how do people get around? You, you're talking 12, 15 feet on the one side of this building. You're talking tight 90 degree corners, you know, two cars. Is this a very crowded lot for public access? Yeah. Never mind the snow plowing. It's, it's, a, it's the... Uh, it looks like looking at the print on the on the right hand side there's there's 20 feet right 20 feet there on the back side I, uh, and I don't know what the uh, the setback requirement is it's 20 20 uh, I think they got 30 but feet. he's 21 feet right back there so it, it there's only one side that's on the left hand side where he's he's 15 feet and I guess he could cut it go into the uh, to the uh, tree line there, that you know, that barrier. And well, pick people, up five are, feet. people are going to be, and you can't. But that's you got to maintain the, the, uh, the buffer. buffer, and that's a twenty-five foot buffer on that side. Oh, you brought a magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah. Things, Mark. Well, how else could I? Do? <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's uh, a good idea. So I mean, can he pick up five feet on that side? No. No, because you got twenty-five foot setback for buffer. Uh, okay, let's see. And then you start crowding. Yeah, there's 40 feet total. Yeah, you know, and we don't want to, John. We don't want to be designing. That's the whole point. No, yeah. I know that, but I'm just. Uh, I think. I think. We've we've stated our concern. Mm -hmm. I think he understands what needs to be done. I think we've actually discussed this somewhat with John um, Norm yeah. during the public hearing. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, you guys are make. I can't make the motion. You yeah. guys make the motion. You decide what you want to do, and people vote there what they think. And I just want to make one more comment again because I do know that when Norm designed this, he de designed it with millings for he wanted a pervious surface. Um, if we, you know, the town engineer for the particular purposes has requested a hot asphalt mix. If he has requested that, he has to be careful that he does not go over a 65% lot coverage. Right. So th I just want to make sure, I just want to put that out there as well. Otherwise, he runs into those fees. So do we have a motion? Well, uh, I've got a, a one. Moving I, I, I thought this thing was discussed concerning lights going down that we're going to we, install we had discussed it during the public hearing, I think. I well, think I, I thought the engineer mentioned it too. They're going to have lights on the side that. The, on the building. Yeah. The building. So, I mean, that was one of Brian's concerns, you know. Right, right. Uh, so, I think they've already stated how they. they I think they, we pretty much agree with what Brian's saying, but we're also talking about, I think we're looking at space i think we're just looking at the realistic the, the reality of trying to manipulate traffic within the confines being being provided it's well i mean opinion. or even like a snow plow if the snow plow has to to clean this perimeter road how are they going to get around right. the corners right it's so can we get a motion Everybody make a motion and we'll vote on it, whatever it is. Yeah, I'll make a motion to deny application, special permit application 21-1277. Uh, without prejudice. Without prejudice. Um, based on the overall accessibility and... I don't think you need to... No, I don't need to add anything else to it. I can just... Uh, you know what, based on, based on the discussion, the application okay. yeah. here... Yeah. Right, okay. Just make All right. Then that second, motion is made. Second? I'll second that. Motion by Virgo, second. I mean, motion by Matthew, second by Virgo. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. John Sarantopoulos? Yes. Matthew Wendorf? Yes. Vedga Lawrence? Yes. Keith Thurlow? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, I'm going to say good night, and then the applicant uh, should be provided uh, with uh, Commissioner Card's suggested conditions because then you yeah. can include them in the, in the plan.
Well, I'll, in his letter, I'll explain to him the concerns that we all had. Uh, that just answers what I was trying to accomplish. You know, <laughs> I thought the motion would have to, you know, state exactly what you if we were going to if we were going to approve with. it. Yes. But providing this information, yeah. I think that's right. That covers it. Great. Yes. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, new business, special permit application 22-1282, Jolly Commons, LLC, 120 Warrigan Road, JS yes, Map 220, Lot 21, 6.4 acres, general commercial zone, excavation and removal of gravel products under Section 560, earth filling and excavation, Section 700, special permits, and Section 470, site plan review. Uh, is it complete? Yes, it is complete. Okay, uh, received and scheduled for public hearing then. What's our 21st date looking like? Um, we already have one hearing scheduled for March 21st. So we have, if you go through all the new business, we'd have an additional three hearings. Um, so the last hearing is pretty much a... The next hearing. We have no choice. The next <laughs> hearing is going to be... Time gets over, I think. With us is is it the next one? Douglas. Uh, oh, I thought that was two months it got pushed. No, that's for it March. Did. And that's in March. Oh, 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 two months from, okay. Yeah. So. All right, yeah, so I agree. <laughs> is, there, is there any of these that would be issues? I mean, are they desperate for it to be acted on right away? Or is anybody going to um, wait a month? I am not sure. Um, I know that there's two people in the audience. I do not know if they're with the Jolly Commons. Are you with the Jolly Commons application? No? no. Are you with any application? Just with the, uh, okay. Um, that's the one that I was going to say. We do have, um, they didn't ask for any particular date or time for this for Jolly Commons. So if you want to try to. I just foresee. The same thing happened like the last time, <coughs> where mm -hmm. we got such an agenda on mm. this, the very time-consuming, potentially very time-consuming public hearing. And if it is, then this could be. Is it uh, is it possible that we just say that they're scheduled for that, and then staff reach out to them, and and come that night we can table them until the following meeting or something? Would it be? I don't know if that makes sense. Would but it be uh, mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, What's the word for? Could it, could we extend it to April? Is one that I wanted to ask this. Okay, we have to start our public hearing within 65 days of receipt. If we restart it to, um, if we receive it today, receive it today. March would be 28. We could wait until April. That would be April 18th. The third Monday in April would be April 18th. So I just want to ask this gentleman that again, if you would. He, he's, oh. no, he's for a different application. He's for mechanics. He's, he's right. for mechanics Street. So I just, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get whatever ones we can. So if we can't, if you want it for March, then we'll do March. Yeah, as I have it for March, because ours is a fairly simple. Yeah. Existing building, we're not like changing anything, just okay. inside the building. Right. I think the applications out of the three that we have here, that would be the most time consuming and the most uh, questions that need to be asked would be the one uh, for Jolly Commons. So if you want to put that one to April, okay. I could Can understand. Make a motion to that? I'll make a motion to that effect. What's the April date? I believe it was April 18th. Hold on, let me check one more time. Yes, it's on Monday, April 18th. Want me to repeat? Yeah. Okay. Um, put it on the April 18th <laughs> agenda. Okay. You want a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay. Mm. April 18th. Special permit application number 22 1283, Stephen E. McCormick. 
Uh, 42 McCann Street, GIS Map 181, Lot 104.13 acres, and 26 Oak Street, GIS Map 181, Lot 105.25 acres, both general commercial zones, self storage, self service storage facility, and two pre existing buildings under Section 430 and Section 700 of the borough zoning regulations. Uh, is it complete? Yes, it is. Uh, okay, receive and schedule for public hearing. Motion? I make a motion to receive and schedule for public hearing on uh, March 21st. Okay, uh, second? Yeah, I'll second. Got that, Joanne? Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstention? Okay, and the zone map change application 22 1284, State of Connecticut Aquifer, aquifer per Area. Per Program implementation. Getting tired. <laughs> I know. It's because you read all that stuff before. That's why you wore yourself <laughs> out. It's a letter from map delineation. 360 Lake Road, GIS map 61, lot 52, 11 acres, industrial zone. <coughs> Level A mapping approval for the Connecticut Water Company's industrial park well field. Receive and schedule for public hearing. Proposed date, March 21st. Motion. Uh, is this gonna? This I was one gonna should say, be. Is this gonna be quick too? This right. one's gonna be very quick. Yeah, I'll make a motion to, s to schedule it for public hearing, scheduled March twenty first, twenty twenty two. Second. Second. Second burger. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Pass. Adoption of minutes, regular meeting minutes, Tuesday, January eighteenth, two thousand twenty two. I'll make a motion to approve the m meeting minutes from. Second. Second. Regular seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Workshop discussion? Uh, is there any regulation for accessory structure? Mm. I would hope we get this thing done. It should be fairly simple. I mean. Um, I just haven't been able to. Um, completely finish it. it. It should be fairly simple. According to what the attorney had told us the last time, what we need to consider is we need to consider it as a an allowed use. Um, at this point, staff is thinking of um, a special permitted use, so people are... Well, that's what we agreed to at the last... I, I was not... And then we would just have the conditions. I just, because of all the other chaos I, with I other applications. It. No, we'll get, I'll get it done. I'll have it done for you. Five Hopefully five. I'll have a draft out to you by, I was going to say this week, but I'm going to be March 21st. Um, <laughs> it will be out, it will definitely be out by March 21st. So it will definitely have it. Mm. We can That's been run into the same situation. Yeah, we yeah. can these cable that one a little yeah, bit. Yeah, these got to push. It's not been on the agenda that long. <laughs> so, so you want a motion to table? No. No, no it, we'll, we'll just continue. We'll just continue it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there is one thing that, um, well, under correspondence, I'll put it under correspondence, yeah. and to thanks uh, for people to, to start thinking about. Um, as I sent you all out a save a date, um, I asked you for a date that everybody can come for a class. Um, the class that we've, uh, the date that's been chosen is March 22nd, which is the day after your next meeting. I may want to change my mind after what happens on that night. I might not want to come to this the next day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so what? It's going to be at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be here in the town meeting room. I will send March you 22nd. a reminder, but I was going to see you today, so I wanted to let you know. And... Um, we're going to add something else to the workshop, and that is um, the retail and growing situation of cannabis. Um, again, final edits through the um, staff, and we have to run it through the attorney. But the state has already opened the bidding process, and of course they have given us no additional information on how they want us to write our regs. Um, so that most likely will show up with these other ones at the next workshop. So. So yeah, we're going to do that, but that's further out. Right? Yeah. 
that will We've been if we can do if we can do that for March 20 if we can do that for March 21st and if we run to a situation on the 21st right. if we have to schedule you a keep special 21st but it, I do you want to start actually I'm going to make a suggestion are you willing to come here for six o'clock on the 21st and have a workshop from six to seven because no. we know that's going to go be a long meet. No. <laughs> do you want to do we it? We know that we're already going to be here for. Four okay. Hours. Do you want Do you want to do that? Do you want to do it for the following Monday then? Make a special workshop. I, I'm fine with that. I don't care. Everybody sure. else okay with that? 28th. Okay. So March 29th, oh, special okay. meeting. Monday or Tuesday? That's Monday. See, and I just. 28th is Monday. Oh, 28th is Monday. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, 28th. Okay. okay. And what's happening on the 22nd or 21st? 21st is our public hearings. Regularly March scheduled. 21st. Yeah. March, Tuesday, March 22nd is going to be the workshops for FOIA and our teaching seminars for FOIA, Parliamentary Procedure and Ethics. And then on the 28th, the following Monday, we will have our workshops. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What? <laughs> I thought you moved 22nd. To the 28th, so now no, 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 no. March 22nd is the FOIA yes. workshops. Okay. That's the teaching section. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Slater will be here and teaching you FOIA, parliamentary procedure, ethics, that sort of thing. And then the following Monday yeah. will be the workshop, the three workshops. Because if we keep on doing the way we're doing it now, we're not going to get to it with the me with the hearings that we have. Okay. And on what's happening on March 21st? Our March 21st, scheduled. this is our regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. And we have, we already have like three hearings. I get half, uh, a re like half a ream of paper. you're talking about the overlay for one, the other issue would. Um, it's open to, and the cannabis, if we can get the oh, cannabis yeah, done yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yes, what time do you, what time do you want it to start? The workshop? Yes. I, I mean, six o'clock typically is what we do. Sure. Everybody agreeable at six o'clock? I mean, okay. you, you can send an email out and make sure we got time. So if Brian right. has a problem, he might be on the road anyway. Okay. All right. Now we're into d reports, and I know Jill St. Clair has been waiting for a while. Oh, is she? Yes, yeah, she's there. Yes. Good night. Right. Hello, everyone. I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, my office has been working with several potential businesses looking to locate in Killingly been a busy uh, new year. Um, the new owners of Ra Ra's Ice Cream have signed a lease with the um, Owen Bell Park concession stand. And those two entrepreneurs have gone through the Small Business Academy last spring. There'll be a uh, another um, Small Business Academy starting on March 22nd. It's a six uh, session course. Um, it's free to the public. It's from six to eight. Um, participants can sign up through the Killingly Public Library. Um, the Borough Brewery, which will be located at the former location of Black Ponds Brewery, will be opening early this spring. The EDC Commission will continue the discussion regarding the formation of a cultural commission and district. And we're happy to announce the work through our Eastern Regional Tourism District. We approved an $8,000 matching tourism grant for the last Green Valley. Um, any questions? So, so, Jill, while you're there, um, that meeting is going to be prior to our meeting, ECD? ECD? Be prior to March uh, 21st? Regular, yes, our regular scheduled East um, EDC meeting is the first Tuesday of the month. I believe it's March 1st. So are you going to be able to ask them to um, for input on the uh, proposed zone change for the uh, Vance property? Yes, it'll be on our, on our agenda. Um, a couple of our members may have a conflict of interest. Um, but they will definitely have um, a, a discussion. Understood. And I believe there's going to be a presentation. Okay, good. That's all. Any other questions from anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, town liaison? Town council liaison. Cool.
it keeps pretty <laughs> close. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's echoing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, so we had appointments to boards and commissions. Daniel Toth um, was reappointed to the Permanent Building Commission as a regular menu, uh, member. Michael Huco appointed to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate. Lori Zernato to um, Board of Rec as an alternate member. And um, Brian Tavaglia was appointed to the Housing Authority as a regular men, uh, member. The um, Town and Board of Ed Budgets were approved. And um, for new business, a series of um, annual um, grants had, um, or statements of affirmation and policies had to be approved so that um, um, small town grants could be received by the town and they accumulate to about a million a million dollars a year. And that is it. Any questions? I have one quick one. When you're talking about the budgets, those were presented to the town council, correct? Um, they weren't approved because they still have to go to the vote. Um, the the budgets are the monthly budgets. Oh, monthly budget. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, that was going to be a question for you next. Is you you already presented your budget? Yes, I did. Oh, that's the other thing we have in March. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Ides of March. I'd like to we, in March, we ha we also have the pre uh, the presentation <laughs> of the capital <laughs> improvement. <laughs> Because oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to get back to sometime us getting iPads or something because we won't have to have this <laughs> every month. And anytime you get well, something done, it comes right in. You know, you get you can commute with us. Yeah. Okay with us. Like this. No, I I understand that, but I know there, that we there was also the money, but, but there was no. It's not only that. It's not necessarily that, but what's when I got the purview in when we were doing all our WebEx meetings and everything and we were sending out electronically, then I had people requesting for paper copies. So do you want no, the paper copies? Do you want? There's <laughs> definitely, like, especially like the jar drawings, I mean, I always think that I need to bring a magnifying glass so I can read them, the drawings, because they never mm -hmm. just can't Well, see I always it. have full-size ones, too, here. So. Yeah, but I'm saying is, you know, we're going to expect that kind of stuff, but it would just seem like a lot of this stuff could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If it's beneficial, then I support it. If it isn't, if it ain't financially, then. Well, I all I, I need to know is what all the commission members want. Do you do you would you rather have the paper in front of you because some people prefer the paper, or would you rather have it done electronically because we can do electronically right to your own computer? But iPad. which is what iPad? I live <laughs> on my iPad. Yeah, obviously, he does. I, mean, I yeah. Would you be comfortable on a on a yeah. computer? Yeah, I can. You can handle it. I mean, okay. when we come here, uh, there's going to be the big maps in case. I mean, you know, on an iPad you, or anything like that, you can make it bigger so you can actually. You know, if there's something you can't read on the screen, you, you just put it. Blow you it up. See the senior size print. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, all right. Well, let me know. Do you do you? Does anybody still want the paperwork, or you all want? Do you all want? Well, you always, you've always got to have paperwork for the public. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody really wants it and they're not comfortable with the iPad, then yeah, they can always grab it on the way in. All right, just but, tell me. But I, are you guys in it, favor of? Is this under the assumption we're bringing our own devices? Right now, it would be your own devices. I can't right. say when my when the right, right, right. computer would be, or I would be sending everything over. We all show up, and there's nothing. No. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I wouldn't do that because that's not the device. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the thing that I'm saying is, I could send packets electronically and have paper copies here waiting for you. If that is something that would. Well, that's what I did anyway because I'm stupid and didn't see the packet in the <laughs> place where it was. But yeah, which well, I know it's put there. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Apparently, we, we forgot the bright sticker to sti put on your windshield. Well, you Sorry. Right in the window this time, so I could see it. As <laughs> I looked, I said, "Oh, I can remember." It. And I, I still walked by it three times before I picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I picked it up and walked in, and it just didn't register what it was because I was on another planet. M uh, <laughs> one more thing, a motion. Yeah, one more motion. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. I second that. <laughs> All in favor? Done. Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Thank you.